Yeah, the recording or what? All right, all right. All right, guys, welcome to an episode of Electrical Theology. I'm your host, or your electrical theologist, Charles. So, what is an electrical theology? Well, it's a big part of what I've been teaching for decades, which includes, as well, soul mechanics. But because a lot of people are sort of copying that whole term, soul mechanics, I've sort of got away from it and gone into electrical theology. Now, what is electrical theology? Well, for me, God, the universe, however you want to explain it, for me, is all electromagnetic. So God is electric. It is electricity. It is divine electricity. And when I perceive life from this perspective, religious folklores and myths and science make a whole lot more sense to me. And I'm hoping that throughout the weeks and different episodes that you can see where I'm coming from. And so we can then look at the right-brainers and the left-brainers and show that they're basically saying the same thing because the etymology or the origin of the words are pretty much the same thing or they came from the same root words. Uh, for example, we can talk uh, Adam with the right-brainers, the religious ones, which is A-D-A-M, with the, uh, the Abrahamic religions, uh, or we can go with science and go with atom, A-T-O-M. Now in science, they subdivided that particle and then it went subatomic and, and continued to subdivide it, if you will, into lepton, muons, all those fancy names science would give you. But on the religious side, we had the same thing happening. We had, then we had God split the atom. And out of that atom came Eve. And it's actually Chua if you look at the history, but for now we'll just keep it simple. Uh, for most people, they know Adam and Eve. And so Eve then, she divided and then had Cain and Abel and all the sisters and brothers. And supposedly the world came from that. My point is, is that an Adam and Adam are both origins of life for those right and left brain worlds. Now, that being said, what I'm looking at doing, for numerous reasons why I'm even recording these videos, is because there's an immediacy occurring. And what is that immediacy? The immediacy is that Homo sapiens, as we know it, are going extinct. Now, this may sound wild and crazy, but you know what? Every other species before us thought they would last forever. And there was always another species that was adapting faster than the current one. And in so doing, they survived. Or as Darwinian uh, philosophy has it, is that the strongest survive. And it's not so much the strongest, it's who can adapt to the environments, the changing environments that have been changing for millions of years on this planet. Uh, whoever can adapt the best will then continue on. And it's normally the species that is more adaptable. And so Homo sapiens aren't adapting so well. We're getting weaker and weaker because of our environment. And I'm not here to play blame games. It's just 60%, I think it's higher than that, but you can look it up and Google it all you need. But over 60% of our American population is on at least two prescription drugs, and at least 50% 50 of our population is on a prescribed drug. And those drugs, over 200 of the main drugs prescribed, all have depression as a side effect. And no drug cures anything via the pharmaceutical. And so I'm more here to present alternatives to both health, wealth, or all, all the health, wealth, and love perspectives. Right? The perspectives we've been conditioned and indoctrinated into came out of a debt-based system. And what do I mean by debt-based? A debt-based system is in your health, wealth, and love, you don't have enough, or you don't think you're enough, or you don't, you're taught that you will never be enough, right? So in our wealth system for the common masses, there isn't a whole lot of support, if you will, to become millionaires or billionaires, or even close to trillionaires, right? That's controlled by an elite few. And I'm not here to get into conspiracy theories. Y'all can Google enough of that stuff. My point is, is that there's a, con a controlling 10% that tells you or tells us how much money we can spend. They tell us what we can eat, right? And you need their permission to put something into your body, right? Uh, 
Let's go that. No, no, no. Come on, Blunt. Decent, man. We fucking decent. Alright. So, this, what I teach. I teach from an alternative perspective. The alternative perspectives come from the esoteric, the metaphysical, the paranormal, and all these other fancy names over here that aren't normally mainstream. They're not what we're taught in schools. We're told to stay away from them in our religions. We are told that there's a, a boogeyman that we need to avoid, and if you don't, then he will get you. Uh, basically uh, a god and a demon. If you do what you're supposed to do by their doctrine, you will be accepted. But if you don't, then the devil will get you. I don't like that. You get that. Uh, all All right, guys, I want us to look at health, wealth, and love, which we can sort of categorize everything in our life, right? What we want to know about is, and, and what we look after is our, you know, stuff that's here. So electrical theology is just looking at life from a different perspective. It's one that's not adherent to the current indoctrinated or dogmatic systems of our society, be it right or left brain or right or left world. All I'm here to do is simply present to you alternatives and the curiosity to ask questions of things that you think you know, but how do you really know them? So, how I break things down, and right, like that one. Believe. All right, guys. So. Electrical theology basically is just looking at life from this electrical perspective. Right? Everything in our universe runs off electricity. Everything is created out of electricity or the magnetism or both. It is a life force. It is our life breath. It is how we breathe. We breathe in what I'm going to refer not as physical, mental, spiritual so much, but as mechanical, chemical, and electrical. And just as our spiritual mindsets, if you will, regulate our minds and our minds regulate our body. In this sense, our chemical, our, our electricity from the universe into these vessels, these flesh bags, if you will, the electricity regulates the chemicals in our body. And the chemicals then re regulate the mechanics of our body. Now, if our mechanics are out, it's because the chemicals are out of balance. And if our chemicals are out of balance, it's because our electricity is out of balance. And therefore, we somehow restrict it or cut off or whatever you want to use as a terminology that we've severed ourselves off from the universe or the cosmic electrical current or God. You can call him whatever you want or she or it. I don't care. And... My point here is to show you that because of this immediacy of 
our life is, is in the midst of a big change that we need to then get on board with adapting or adopting to this new energy or this new electrical wave coming in. You can call it spiritual, you can call it consciousness, I don't care. When I'm, from my perspective, it makes a lot more sense when I see things from this electrical perspective. Now this electrical perspective is simply put that when the universe, well, I tell you what, let's not go into that just yet. Let's hold that off for another episode. I just want to keep this video short and to the point of what I'll be presenting. And part of that presentation then is we want to look at life not from how other people want us to perceive it. We want to be open to other people's perception, but at the same time, we don't want our lives being ran by their perception. We want our life to be ran by our perception. What makes sense to us? What resonates with us? Right? What harmonizes with our soul? When we make a decision and that, and that little voice says, don't do it, but we don't, but we don't listen to it, and then the consequences has us feeling less than, then we weren't in a harmonic resonant with our soul. So what I'm going to be presenting is that every decision you make is you're deciding on ions. So because everything's electrical in our universe, we can break it down to an ion. And an ion, we can use it in a suffix, in a word such as frustration. Right? Frustration allows us to see how the action that's coming in is being presented. So if I'm frustrated, that shows me how the ions are coming in from the universe. So my ions are in frustration mode, if you will, which gives me frustration. You can also look at ions from an electrical left brain perspective. That is simply a discharge from an electron, be it positive or negative. It's energy, it's electricity. And so everything in our universe is arcing, if you will. So arc and iron are going to be two main things that we're going to pay attention to not only in our literature, in our folklore, in our religions, but we're going to look at it in science as well to give us an insight or a, a how do we want to put it, um, privy to what the secret societies and those who don't want us to know, know, if that makes sense. So let's just go on and simply let's look at what's changing in our life. So the health that we were told to adhere to was compiled by a government, right? So a government knows what's better for your body than what you know for your body. So that doesn't make much sense. Only you know what's best for your body, right? Love. We were told how to love what to love. We were told to, at least in the West here, that you... When you turn 18, you or when you start getting of age, you start looking for potential girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, or mates, that you then want to settle down with and have children with, and then go work at your job for 30 years, retire and die. And that is love, right? And that we needed the government's permission again, right? We need to give them our money, our hard-earned hard money, so they can give us a piece of paper that says, we're married or we're not married, right? We'll get into all these in more detail later. I'm just giving you a quick quick synopsis just to give you an idea of what we'll be talking about each week. Now, financial, the financial system is that the government is not really the person pulling the strings of how much you get paid. It literally is the people behind the government. It is the Federal Reserve, the in, uh, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, these guys... They're all world bankers, and they have been for hundreds of years. And they're the ones who control and loan out money to the governments of the world, including our own, which we, the government, then has to pay back at a percentage. Right? So the government, our government's not in charge of printing money or um, telling you how much rate or interest that you're going to pay. That's all set up by these secret societies, if you will. And we're not going to get too deep into that. We just want you to know that these three systems of health, wealth, and love, which include education, medical, and science, and all the rest, they have their agenda of what they, the 10%, the rich, and I'm not against rich, I'm against those who keep it from others, um, purposefully and 
Well, well, we can get into that to another time. Right now, I don't want to get too political. Um, and I don't plan on, I just want to give you big pictures of claiming back your life out of a debt-based system. Because the old system, at least here in the West, in the U.S., is that you are told that you can't do anything unless you have to ask a doctor's permission about nutrition, but yet they don't, aren't trained in nutrition. That the money you earn goes, that the powers that be want you to put your money into their banks, that they then take your money and go invest it and make millions or crash the market purposefully, and then give you 0.05% or 5% or somewhere in between on that money, right? At the end of the year, almost 30 to 40% of everyone's income, and these are in middle to lower incomes, are given back to the government or the world banks. And every nine years, the world banks will crash the system, having the taxpayer pay more taxes to then keep them in more debt. And so the, what this does is psychologically puts in our mind that because we're not making enough, therefore we're not enough. The religions then support this by saying, you're not good enough, you're a sinner, and you'll never be good enough. You have to ask forgiveness of, of your life. You have to have someone else save your life instead of you saving your own life. So you can see that these systems are all debt-based. They're not meant to make you feel good. They're not there to make you access joy and happiness. And most importantly, they're not there to help you understand that you are love and you have always been love. You have never not been anything else. It's these systems, these egoic greed systems, that have, in essence, made you believe that you're not good enough. And so, let me pause here for a second. So these debt-based systems have kept you feeling less than, earning less than, loving less than, settling for relationships that you give your power, your dignity, your soul over. Again, I'm not here at any time to say any of these systems are about a good. They're just systems, but are they your systems? Now, if they're not your systems, then that's what these episodes will be about, right? We're going to look at it these health, wealth, and love systems from an electrical perspective, and let's hope it makes a whole lot more sense, right? And that being said, I want you to then look at some of these new systems that we are adapting to. Yeah, hold on, I need to get
<clears throat> so these dip based systems are in essence deconstructing and we can get into a whole bunch of that and I will over the weeks but basically it's because of the, the evolution of the human brain and the evolution of the human brain is creating more technology and anytime new technology comes along then our human brains change and therefore need to adapt to the new technologies again we'll get into all that later but the main thing I wanted to bring up is that the new systems that we are having to individualistically build and construct is a foundation that most of us have never known. We were told what our foundations were. We lived other people's foundations. And those foundations, like I said, are dismantling or crumbling. Or your own experiences in life has showed you that those systems no longer work for you. They may work for others, but they're not working for you, and that's who I'm talking to. So the new system is all about being incentivized. Now, knowing that you are love, then, and understanding that you've never not been loved, that you can start loving yourself now, instead of believing what others, science, religions, families, whatever, have told you about you. No, you're love. You'll always be love. You can't not be love. So understanding that you are love, then you can start loving yourself, and then you can always love others now better from the heart, not from the mind. Love doesn't happen from the mind, it only happens from the heart. Right? I know, and I'll go into my story some if you want later. And you can comment down below and see if you want me to talk about that on another episode. That being said, in the health alternative world is that we're no longer sitting by and eating the chemicals that certain companies want us to eat to make us sicker, that then we have to go to allopathic medicine, that then they give us the pharmaceuticals, that then put us in a depressive state, that, you know, you see, you see the rabbit hole there. But the alternative is eating foods that are alive, foods that work in harmony with your cells and your body and the electricity. Right? With more water, and most plants, fruits, and vegetables have more water in them, and the more plants we eat, the more the electricity in our body is able to conduct itself. And when we don't have enough fluids or water flowing through our body, then we get friction, and that turns into depression. It gets turned into uh, anxiety, agitation, irritation, all these words of ions. So the ions coming in are irritated because it doesn't have a conducive platform in which to flow on. We'll keep it simple that way. And then financially, this debt-based system where since you were born you've gone into debt and everything that you do puts you further in debt but yet the job that we were told to get don't pay us enough to pay for any of this stuff so we have to go guess what to borrow money from the banks who borrow their money from the bankers right the elite bankers the ones who control the finances of the world right and but the new system is incentivized which means you are in control of your own money. We no longer put our money into the banks. We put them into our pockets. And this system is called digital currency, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. There's a whole bunch of there. There's, there's a whole world there, but the average masses don't even know about this world. And so I will be focusing on that more so than the other two because this is one that can have you independently wealthy. Right? And I'm not here to shill anything. I'm just going to give you information about the system and have you understand it from a technological system-based, incentivized, decentralized system, right? And this takes the power out of those who have the power. And we're putting it back. So your health, your wealth, and your love is now going to be defined by you. So when you have definitions or you start defining ions, you will then, like any definition, will give your life meaning. Because you're the only one who give, give yourself... You're the only one who can define your life and therefore give it meaning, and therefore that meaning is your purpose. And the purpose is to love yourself. And when you love yourself, you are incentivized. You want to initiate, you want to pass your ions out to others, which passing ions is pass ions, which is passion. And then when you can pass your ions, you have a moral compass, not in accordance with anyone else's system, but your own moral compass, that voice inside your head. 
And when you have that moral compass and you combine those words of compass and passion, you have compassion. So you have a compassionate, empathetic understanding of how and why other people are going through what they are going through. And then through your love, we can then be a signpost or ourselves an incentive for them to be better. So thank you for watching today. And remember, hug those likes. Uh, subscribe if you want to find out what's coming up next or when it comes up. And if you want to, just give that bell a little ding. I know my kids love it when I have to say those things. They laugh at me and ridicule me, but that's part of the fun of this world. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.